Hi there, I'm Brian, and I will be joined later by Anne, and we are from the Lincolnwood Library, and today we are going to go over what we call technology for child caregivers, setting expectations with our technology. So the Lincolnwood Library is here to help all the residents of Lincolnwood, including families and caregivers, with media and information and books and technology. So today, this is the first video in a series that we are going to develop about technology and how you can use it thoughtfully as your family grows. So you are taking advantage of it instead of it taking advantage of you. So each episode is going to cover a different topic in this area of what child caregivers can do and understand and know about technology to do a good job for their family. We will do this in kind of a um, easygoing kind of discussion style, almost podcast format, and we hope you'll enjoy it. All right. So today our topic is setting expectations related to technology as a family. So we're just going to go over who we are in case you don't already know us. We're going to talk a little bit about media use at different developmental stages and ages for kiddos. We're going to give you some ideas for questions you might want to ask yourself and your family when you're thinking about setting expectations for media. We're going to go over media use agreements and how that might look in your family culture. And we're going to leave you with some really great resources and tools for you to explore on your own time. So I am Anne, and you've already met Brian. Um, on future episodes, we're going to have some different librarians joining us, but that is who's going to be here with us today. So my name is Anne. If you haven't seen me before in the library or at one of our virtual programs, I'm the early literacy specialist for Lincolnwood Public Library. So that just means that I work with all of our very littlest kiddos and their caregivers. Um, I've been working with little kids for quite some time now, and I am here doing these technology videos to give you the benefit of my experience and to support you guys as caregivers, to empower you to make choices that are best for your family and to not be judgmental to let to let to let you be in a safe space with me so that you can ask questions and know that I am not going to judge you. So I'm Brian. I am kind of the technology instructor at Lincolnwood Library. And as of August 2020, I have a brand new daughter. So I'm constantly thinking both about her and technology. So the interaction of that, how she and our family will use technology together. I've been working in different libraries since 2011 and specifically for Lincolnwood since 2013. I just try in my life to explain technology to people. It's really my passion to help things work for you. My bias is really to help you figure out what works for you and your family. So we're first going to cover the ages and stages of media use. So when it comes to very young children using media, there are recommendations that have been put out by the American Academy of Pediatrics, which are pretty uh, vague and intentionally vague in the sense that they're just meant to be guidelines. They're not meant to be hard and fast rules. But in general, the recommendation is that from birth to about 18 months old, your kiddos should not be using technology. So they shouldn't be viewing TV or movies or playing with the phone, playing with the iPad, except if it's to have some sort of interactive experience. So a lot of, especially during COVID, a lot of this is going to be those FaceTime chats, those Zoom chats, where they can see maybe a family member that they're not able to see in person. Those are really, really beneficial for this age group and can really provide some great bonding. So those are absolutely recommended as healthy for this age. For about 18 to 24 months, so up to two years old, we're going to try to avoid using media alone as much as possible. And even for older kids and just choosing some high quality media. So not just putting anything on, but being really intentional about what you're letting your kiddos use at that age. And then when we get up to two years, up through kindergarten age, up through five years old, we're limiting screen use as much as possible. So our, the original recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics was 
one hour per day. They have revised it for COVID times because they know that a lot of kiddos, even in preschool, are doing Zoom school. They also know that we're really overwhelmed as caregivers and giving our kiddos more screen time, giving ourselves more screen time. So the one hour has become a little bit dated, um, especially during the pandemic, but we're just being intentional with trying to limit it as much as possible. And again, still choosing that high quality programming to give to your kiddos, if possible, co-viewing it, right? So maybe watching an episode together or playing a game on the on the phone or on the iPad together. And that is really intended to help kiddos understand what they're seeing and process it because they still are not at an age where they're able to really process all of the media that's coming at them or that they're experiencing passively. So again, just as a reminder, it's okay if these guidelines, if you're thinking to yourself, oh no, well, I gave my kiddo three hours of screen time yesterday because I really needed to get a project done for work. That is completely fine. Nothing bad is going to happen. It's all about just taking this as a suggestion and remembering the effects that media use can have on, on especially very small kiddos and just trying to get, reach a balance where they have plenty of time to do all of the other things that they need to do as kiddos. This is a really great resource, especially for slightly older kiddos. So a lot of the American Academy of Pediatrics resources gear a little bit younger because that's when we get the most questions about, can I let my kid have the iPad? Can I let my kid use the phone? That's usually when we get those questions is at those younger ages. But this report is great because it breaks it down into developmental stages. So zero through two, three to four, five to six, and seven to eight. And then it not only explains to you in a really accessible way, what your child's brain is doing at that stage and how media might affect it negatively or positively, but it also gives you some great recommendations for how to substitute non-media activities for something that might be a media, a traditionally tech related thing, how to substitute that with a, or to supplement it with a hands-on, more hands-on play experience. And then also just some ideas for you to think about when you're thinking about setting limits for these ages, just some ideas to keep in the back of your mind. So that's a really great one. So let's take a look at this. We've got it here. So, so they've got this full report. It is available just to the public. You can download it and read it at your leisure, Child Development 101. And they go through all the different ages with kind of specific sections that they repeat for each age group. Mm -hmm. And this is especially great too, as you're thinking about why do I need to limit media use? Exactly those tips for adults. Why do I need to limit media use? How do I do that effectively? And how do I communicate to my kids, especially these slightly older kids, why we are creating ex expectations for technology use? Why does it matter? These have some really great resources and kind of talking points for grownups to be able to respond to those questions from kids. There's also so many great resources, not just related to media and technology use, but again, because the American Academy of Pediatrics has put out quite a few statements related to screen time and has done a number of studies related to screen time and kiddos, there is so much here and it goes up to a much older age group than the Erickson study, the PDF study we just looked at goes to. So not just with tech, but so many topics that you might be curious about for as a parent or a caregiver, this website is full. <laughs> this website has so much for you to explore and has a couple specific tools we'll talk about too. So the first of which is the media time calculator. And we're just going to actually fill these out. So I'll say hypothetical fake family. And we'll put in just a boy child and a girl child. We'll say the boy is two to five years. And the little girl is a little younger. We'll say she's in that group. And they just take you through. You can fill this out. So you press next. And you can see some automatic recommendations. Mm -hmm. So you can drag all of these. So the sleep recommendation is based on the amount of sleep that pediatricians believe that that age group should get. So that should stay about the same. And if your child is sleeping a little more, maybe you could add a little bit more, but then you're going to go through all of these other 
types of activities that might fill your kiddo's day. And you'll see that as you add time to each of those, the screen time shrinks more. So it's just to remind you and to keep in mind of that balance so that you know that your kiddo has plenty of time in their day to do meals, to do a physical activity outside, to go to remote schooling or to go to in-person schooling, to spend time with you and, and your other adults in the family. So it just helps you remember how to kind of balance that out. And it does give you those great sleep recommendations for each of the ages. So you know that the day is full with a good balance of different types of things for your kids. And you can also see this information in Spanish, which is very helpful. The recommendations and kind of the visualization could be very helpful. Now they also have family media use plans. They've got this page where they describe it, but we can click through and they will start to take us through creating our own family media plan. So again, you would put your name and we'll do the same kids as examples. And then it's gonna take you through so many different considerations. So maybe you wanna set as your family, maybe you wanna have some zones, some physical zones of your household that are screen free. So maybe dinner time, maybe the kitchen, maybe your bedroom. So you can go ahead and go through these. You wanna say, okay, both kiddos, we're not gonna allow them to have the devices in the bedroom. You know, whatever it is, you can also, it's really great just like with the media time calculator, you can type in your own. So maybe you wanna say, we have a family game night every Friday night. And during family game night, that's a device-free zone. And we all agree to that at grownups and kiddos. So you can really customize this. And you don't have to go through, if you look at it, there are so many different little sections. If you look and you say, nah, I don't really need that section, feel free to, to eliminate it. And all of it is optional. So for example, device curfews. Maybe you want to set a curfew that after 8 p.m., for example, you're not gonna allow your kiddos to use technology. Or if they're very little, maybe it's very much earlier in the day that you're not gonna allow them to use the tech. So you can do that. And then you could also add things like, we're going to physically take the devices and put them in this room when, when our curfew has hit its time. So there are so many different options just to think about for what you might wanna consider including in your family media use plan. So that co-viewing, exactly. Yep, so there's just all different kinds of options and it helps you kind of trigger your own thought process as to, hey, yeah, do I want my kiddo to be doing that? Is it, am I okay with them using an app that has ads in it? Am I not okay with that? So just to get your thought process going. And then when you fully complete it, it allows you to download a version of it so that you can have it all in one place and not have to go through the calculator again and again. So you do have to create an account to download this. So you'll want to create an account now with the healthychildren.org website. And if you're uncomfortable for whatever reason creating an account, you can also just go ahead and write this all out, go through the calculator and write it out in a Google document or maybe on paper, however you want to do it and then kind of create your own media plan based off of the information that's here and the ideas that are here, which we have another great example of that later. So next, we want to ask some questions. What, why, when, where, and how our families are using technology and what some of our expectations are about that. So again, just asking a whole bunch of questions. What are we using technology for? And what are we allowed to do? Are we playing games? Are we doing homework? If we are really young, are we just doing video conferences with our poor relatives we can't see? What time is that happening and where? If you're in a certain room, privacy may or may not encourage uh, positive uses of technology. Just think about that. We're not saying any specific thing to do. What are we making? And when we make it, who are we sharing things with? Are 
our sharing decisions, helping us grow. What content is acceptable? There's all sorts of content out there on YouTube, filters, even in some child websites sometimes fail. Are we co-viewing? When we have problems with technology, what do we do? What do we do if something upsets us when we're online? And how do we try to avoid that? There's all sorts of different questions. I'm sure you can think of more questions in this vein of thought. But as you're thinking about your family, your particular use of technology, you may try to ask yourself questions like these and really take some time to think kind of what you want your kids to learn from technology, what they're going to learn from you, what you're going to learn together. And especially because when you're creating one of these family media plans, there's a lot that you're agreeing to as a whole family. So there are certain things that will be age specific and kiddo specific, but it's really important to remember that you're a role model for your kiddos too. So when you're creating the family media use plan, you need to think about how your own media use is going to be affected by it and how you're going to be able to follow the guidelines that you agree to as a family as well. So speaking of those agreements, we're going to talk about family culture and media use agreements now. So that family media plan that we looked at earlier is so great for thinking about some of these culture questions. What you agree to as a family is acceptable technology-wise. So not only the use of technology, but also the content. So we looked at the family media plan. We're also going to look at a resource called Common Sense Media, which lets you break down a bunch of specific content-related questions. So for example, if in your family media plan, you agreed as a family to all not watch media or not engage in gaming that includes violence. So you might want to look through some of the common sense media reviews to see if a prospective game, maybe your kiddo really wants to play a certain game and you want to make sure that it doesn't have any kind of violent scenes in it, but you don't want to personally play through hours and hours of gaming yourself. Common sense media is a really great place to find that info. Same with movies, TV, books, apps, all different types of stuff. So here are some screenshot examples of common sense media. They try to kind of systematically rate different things. And it's great because it's just available online for anyone to read. You see, they have all sorts of different categories. And they uh, use specific examples from the media that you are talking about. They really let you understand it. And after seeing this, you can make those judgments yourself. So let's take a look. So here is Common Sense Media, and it's available at commonsensemedia.org, and they have a search box. Now, before we get into this too far, I just want to point out that they can't cover everything. They're constantly adding more and more media. So if there's something they are missing, surprisingly, like the very popular music artist, Billie Eilish, uh, 161 results, but none of them are really just Billie Eilish herself. You may have to go to other review websites. There are lots of websites where things are being reviewed from musicians to games and apps and movies, but Common Sense Media does a really good job of being systematic and kind of taking a family-centric approach. So for example, if you're looking at a movie, so this is a great movie example, Common Sense Media will give you a bunch of different things. So it will give you an age recommendation, which it will also let you know because it has a user base, kind of like Wikipedia or Goodreads, where you can add user comments to each of the entries. There are reviews that also give their own age recommendations. So right there, it's saying parents are saying six plus, kids are also saying six plus. Sometimes these will be very different. So it's good to remember Member to look through, wow, that's that's a really different makeup of age groups that people think this is appropriate for. Let's investigate this further. That can be kind of a clue to you to look further into it. It'll also sometimes give you these trailers, things that, that were promoted when the movie or the TV show was coming out. Sometimes it'll just give you those just FYI in case you wanted to see a little trailer on it or some stills from it. Like with the video games, they'll sometimes put stills from gameplay. And then kind of the meat of it is these little reviews, what parents need to know, and these little boxes. 
So if, for example, you, again, if you agreed as a family not to watch anything that had violence in it, you're looking, oh, it has three out of five. Let's check. What is it? What do they mean by violence or scariness? And it'll give you very, very specific walkthroughs of each of the scenes that could be considered violent. So maybe if as a family, you agree, it's okay if the violence is more cartoonish, if it's kind of like Looney Tunes style, really unrealistic violence. And you're looking through and you're thinking, okay, well, that seems more in line with what we're okay with versus more gritty, realistic violence. And we're not okay with that as a family. So it gives you really detailed information about it. Whereas sometimes movie and TV, especially ratings just kind of give you such a general sense. Um, So that's a really great add for that's a really great addition that common sense media has and they also have just kind of a general review and then they also have those user reviews so a lot of the user reviews like anything like any reviews for anything will be really different from one another but they can also be a source of information where maybe the reason someone dislikes a movie or a piece of media makes you really like it (laughs) maybe the opposite maybe the reason someone likes it was that it was too scary and your family is not into that So that's really helpful. And then they also often have suggested other things that are similar in theme or topic, like right there on the right side, it's telling you that here's some other superhero related things. Here's some other book adaptation related things. So it can also kind of be used for things for a way to find other things that are similar to whatever your kiddo really likes. So if your kiddo really liked Captain Underpants, the movie, and you thought it was really great as a family, you agreed that it was great. You could also use the tools in common sense media to find some similar movies. So they do have a number, a limit of how many articles you can view for free per day. You would then have to get their plus subscription, which makes them ad free and helps to keep them independent. But we do just want to go through that they review a whole bunch of different types of content. So um, if we had not run into our limit, this is a book, book 12 in the series, and they do the same kind of structured review of that. They also review even applications and services. Apple has a game platform called Apple Arcade, which is a subscription, and Common Sense Media reviews that. They also review just specific apps, Disney Plus, the new streaming service. They say it is eight plus and they have this same structured review. They do TV shows as well. The Mandalorian, which is on Disney Plus, they go through content for all ages. This is an older age oriented and common sense media and parents and kids agree, although the kids think it's a little younger which is interesting. They do games as well. Popular Nintendo Switch game, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Common Sense Media thinks it's a little older than the reviews. They do websites as well. Know Your Meme is a website you can use if you're not understanding some piece of technology slang. Your kids are saying or talking about something you don't understand. Know Your Meme explains those things in really kind of in-depth articles, including examples. So you can understand different types of memes and if they're associated with things that are good or bad or just kind of bizarre, random internet stuff. They do music artists as well. And they do apps. Also, this is a child-oriented app. And they also curate a lot of, under each of those types of media, they curate a lot of nice lists. So they have lists like recommended apps for preschoolers, recommended apps for ABC learning, things like that. So that you, if you don't have a specific app in mind and you're not searching for a specific thing, you can also just browse for some recommendations as well. And of course they do movies. This is the fairly new and popular Disney movie, Soul. And they say it is eight plus. They also have this little kind of award check mark. They say it's good for families. And they integrate with how you can watch some of these particular items as well with just watch. And then you could click through to Disney plus. And again, you see the trailers and all the structured information and what you need to know, kind of the general review, and then the parents say, and 
kids say reviews. And you see that they pretty much anonymize the kids who are writing these views as well. So I think they really understand families and children and they help us out with media analyzing it. The Lincolnwood Library Family Technology Use Agreement template doesn't construct itself like the one available at healthychildren.org, but we try to be really inclusive and we put together what we think are good recommendations to be thinking about. You can cut and paste, you can modify. We are going to make this available. You can click a link in the description of this video for a version that you can edit yourself. We promised we would leave you with lots of resources and tools beyond what we have already talked about, which we've already talked about several, but we wanted to add some more. So of course you can contact your local librarians more. Um, there's a perception that we just love books, but we're happy to talk about other things as well. Yeah, especially like I mentioned before, I know that it can be hard if you're struggling. There's a lot of parent shaming, a lot of caregiver shaming around screen time. And I know it can be hard to say, I actually do let my kiddo use the iPad. That is fine. We are not here to judge you. We are just here to help you make the decisions that are best for your family. And we can also recommend really great when we're talking about what is high quality media, we can also really recommend great things that are high quality so that if you're in in search of something that is appropriate developmentally for your kiddo's specific age, we definitely can help you with that. Like this kind of cynical XKCD comic says, we can't really go back to a time when there isn't technology. The library and librarians can help you to find the best media for you and your family, the right media. You know, technology is always changing things and we want to learn and adapt with it. And we can help you do that. Some other really great resources, especially for caregivers with younger children, your pediatrician is a good place to go if you have some questions about what the recommended amounts are, especially, or if you have questions about how to use media in an effective way with your kiddo. So maybe you want to start co-viewing something and you really want to get the most out of that experience. Your pediatrician should be, hopefully, should be trained in some of those media mentorship type of questions. They should be able to answer things like that for you. We also talked about already healthychildren.org and the AAP, which is the American Academy of Pediatrics. So those both have a lot of information on not just how much screen time to have, but what kinds of things are good for kids, what kinds of apps are more developmentally appropriate for certain ages. So those are both really great. Um, the Screen Time Action Network and CyberWise both have a great number of resources. They will take you a long time to get through all of them, but you can kind of pick and choose articles based on what you're interested in. So some of it is about things like online privacy. Some of it is about things like using media ethically and responsibly. So, you know, being kind online, those types of issues. And some of it is about what are options that we have besides technology to enjoy ourselves. So what can I give my kiddo if I really do need a break? but I really don't want them to have something, you know, like the iPad, I really don't want to turn on the TV. What kinds of things could I do with them? What other types of things are available? So there's so, so many resources available on both of those websites. Another one that's really great. And again, you know, just to remind everybody that librarians are not averse to talking about media is that the, the Library Association for Services to Children, which is ALSC, has a brand new, it's a couple of years old now, Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media. So especially for those littlest kids, it has winners, it has a winner and honors each year. So you can see the 2020 award went to the Molly of Denali app, and then it also had some honor recipients. There are not just apps, but also websites that they review and cho can choose as their honor or their winner for the year. And they kind of tell you exactly why they chose it, why it is exceptional or why it is so high quality. And then it links out to it so that you can download it or go to it and experience it for yourself if you like. So the Molly of Denali, for example, has some really great educational content. It pairs with the Molly of Denali show. So there's kind of a double media 
there, the app and the TV show. And also there are books now, so you can also get the books. Um, but they have some great breakdown of what kinds of things are included in the app. And then again, if you don't have enough information there, you can hopefully find it in Common Sense Media too, depending on what it is. If it's if it's mainstream enough, some you know it's hit or miss, like we talked about with Common Sense Media, that they don't always have everything, even if we expect it to be so popular that they would have it. Along with Common Sense Media, there are other ratings organizations like the MPAA for movies. And uh, there are video game rating organizations, but those just tend to spit out just kind of generic G, PG, PG-13. And to stay more up to date with kind of the technology side, we just really recommend staying up to date basically with technology news. That's really one of the best ways to learn about technology. There are often articles that talk about kind of the interaction of technology and kind of our lives, our social science, what we're doing. One of the best sites I recommend is The Verge, kind of an odd name, but they do reviews of technology and services and media as well. They cover all sorts of different things. They focus on a lot of the big technology companies, but they also cover up and coming technology and they cover games as well. So it is a really good website. This is one that I like to read a lot, but there are lots of them. Gizmodo, TechCrunch, there are tons. As long as it's one that is fairly mainstream, you will be kept up to date and you can use their content to inform what you are thinking about in terms of kind of the specific technologies that you are using. Now, you'll want to use some of these kind of more child-focused organizations to center on kind of exactly what you're doing and screen time, but it's important to keep up with what is being developed. All right. So we also, we included our personal contact information at the very beginning, but we also are here to remind you again, that we're here as a resource for you guys. So we have our phone call lines for our information services and our youth and teen services desks. We also have those emails and we have a lot of resources that we've already created for you guys or that other people have created and we've curated. We have some on our YouTube channel and we have a lot on our website. So definitely those are great resources as well as the other websites and organizations we mentioned. So for Anne and myself, I want to thank you for watching this video. We plan to have more. Keep up with our YouTube channel and we post all of our events in our newsletter. We're here to help you with these videos and also one-on-one -on -one with any kind of technology questions. And we're just hoping that you're using technology in a way that makes your family successful, makes you successful, and that benefits you as a family and as your family continues to grow. Thank you so much. Thank you.